I wanted to introduce our next guest speaker, who everyone here probably knows and loves, my sister Yasmin Mugahid, who is known for her gift of captivating an entire audience with thoughts and insightful reflections. As a skilled creative writer, her literature speaks from the heart and she's felt by millions around the world. After completing her graduate work, she taught Islamic studies and served as a youth coordinator. Currently, she's a writer for the Huffington Post, a highly sought after international speaker, and an author who focuses most of her work on spiritual and personal development. She's well known for her book available worldwide, Reclaim Your Heart, Personal Insights on Breaking Free from Life's Shackles, which I highly recommend to everyone in this room. So please give it up for Sister Yasmin Mugahid. Assalamu alaikum. That was, that was a heartfelt alaykusam. Thank you. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul uqdata min lisani yaqaw qawli. I'm not sure if you're aware, but I'm be, I've... I've been given a difficult task, uh, and that is basically there's, it's hard to decide which one's more difficult. Uh, when I'm asked to speak right before Maghrib in Ramadan or while people are eating. Um, so it's a toss up. But if I can request from you, and I, I really appreciate it, I know it's difficult, especially when you guys are eating at 10 p.m. and you're hungry, it, to just give me your attention just for a few moments, inshallah. Because I think that what we're talking about here today is extremely important. There are a few themes that I want to discuss, but before I do that, I want to remind everyone that we're here to talk about leadership, right? But here's the thing that happens when you're in a position of leadership, and anyone in this room who's ever been in a position of leadership will attest to this. If you are given a position of any sort, you will verily be tested. Verily be tested. Meaning, you will face storms. You will have your character tested. You will have your faith tested. And that is why it is extremely important as, mashallah, those who came before me, Yasmin and Abrar mentioned, and all of the amazing speakers who came before me mentioned, it is not enough to just be involved in activism. And the reason I'm impressed with this organization is I feel right now we have a vacuum in the new generation. And that vacuum is what I would term as a terbiya vacuum. What is a terbiya vacuum that we have, see, my generation, and I'm turning a certain type of age in three days. It's that big age. I'm not going to tell you what it is. But anyway, moving along um, swiftly, 40. But anyway, um, and when I was young, we had a lot of youth training. We used to call it Minna at that age or YM. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And I truly believe that that turned us into the leaders who are now spearheading the Islamic work. But then something happened post 9-11. Something happened. And there became a vacuum of terbiya. What is terbiya? Terbiya is to develop a human being from the inside out. We are missing that on a large scale. We have a lot of activism, mashallah. We are doing work. We have a lot of maybe leadership, but there's something missing from the inside out. And I will explain that as roots. We are missing deep roots. We are missing foundation. And what happens if you don't have roots and you don't have foundation is like what would happen to a tree that doesn't have roots and the wind blows and the wind will blow. And as you mentioned, for example, you are tested when you go to university. You could be at an Islamic school. You could be a hafiz. But if you do not actually have those deep roots beyond the memorization and beyond the surface, as soon as you go to university and you are tested, you cannot handle that test. And a lot of people fail once they are hit with that storm. 
The first time they're tested, they're uprooted. And that happens when you don't have that deep training, when you don't have that internal training. This is what the Prophet ﷺ did. There is a very profound hadith where Aisha radiallahu says that if the first verses to be revealed were do not commit zina, do not commit fornication, people would have said we will never leave fornication. And unfortunately, a lot of our youth are saying stuff like that. We will never leave it because it's too hard. If the first verses to be revealed were do not drink alcohol, the people would have said, and by the way, these people, we're talking about companions, right? We're not talking about us people. We're talking about companions. She said that if the first verses were telling them to give up these things, they would have said, we will never give up alcohol. And this is the hikmah, the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu that the first verses were about training a human being from the inside out. They were not about rules. If you look at the way the Quran came down, the Meccan verses by and large were not about fiqh. The Meccan verses were not about rules. They were not about give up usury or riba, give up alcohol, give up zina. No, they were doing something else. They were building the, the character of the people. They were building that strong foundation and those roots so that later on, when the rules came down, سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا The people said, we hear and we obey. That is how you can withstand the storms. But you have to have deep roots. And that, I believe, is what we are missing in our youth today. We have a vacuum in the roots. We have a vacuum in the foundation that Maybe we had a few generations ago and we're missing right now. And that's why an organization like this is so important. Because it, it focuses on building those roots, not just the leaves of the tree, right? We can become active, we can decorate the, you know, the tree. But if you don't have roots, you will not withstand the storms and the storms will come. And the storms will more, even more, they will be even more intense the more position you are given, the more leadership, the more power you are given, the more you are blessed, the more you are tested. And so we have to train our young people to be able to withstand these tests. And how does that happen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah la ma hatta ma This is imperative. Allah says that he does not change the condition of a people until they change what is inside themselves. The Prophet ﷺ tells us in a very profound hadith. Many of us know this hadith. He talks about haram is clear and halal is clear. And between them are these things called mutashabihat or the doubtful matters. I'm sure everyone learned this in Sunday school or Islamic school. But the hadith doesn't end there. By the way, I personally, mind was blown when I realized the hadith doesn't end there. The hadith continues, and it says, Inna fil jasadi mudgha. Indeed, in the body, there is a lump of flesh. Ida saluhat salah al jasadu kullu. If that lump of flesh is set right, then the whole body will be set right. Wa ida fasadat, fasad al jasadu kullu. And if it is corrupted, then the entire body is corrupted. Indeed, it is the heart. Why does the Prophet ﷺ begin the hadith, the discussion, talking about rules, and then ends with talking about the heart? And the answer is that when you fix the heart, you fix the actions. When the heart is healthy, then the actions will be healthy. Then it will become easier to follow the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it will become easier to withstand the storms that will definitely face you. Listen to this. When Luqman, we're, we're told, when he was advising his son, he had a lot of wisdoms that we are tell, told about in the Quran, in, in Surah Luqman. One of the advice that he gave his son is this amr bil ma'roof nahi an al munkar, right? This commanding what is good to calling people for what is good and forbidding what is bad. It's basically not just living in a cave 
but also going out and speaking out against injustice, about calling people to what's right, about what Yasmin did when you mess with an Egyptian woman, yeah? So what happened there is that she took a stand, right? That action is Amr bil ma'roof nahi an al munkar. That's, that's what that's called. But look at what he says. He says to his son that he needs, he, he advises his son, Amr bil ma'roof, wanha an al munkar, wasbir ala ma asabak. So in the same discussion, he says, call people to what is good, forbid what is evil, and have sabr for what will come your way. There is a lesson here. And that is that when you take a stand, when you take a, a position of leadership, you will be tested. And therefore, immediately after telling him that, he says, have sabr on what will face you, what will come your way. We won't be able to have that sabr if we don't have those roots, if we don't have that foundation. And that foundation starts inside, in the training, the tarbiyah that we give to our children and to those that we are raising. So, inna Allah la yughayru ma biqawmin hatta yughayru ma bi anfusihim. And I don't want to make this long, so I want to wrap up with this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, He tells us, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, taqu allaha wal tanzur nafsu ma qaddamat lighat. So, Allah calls out to the believers. And he says, O oh, you who have believed, have God consciousness. So the first thing he says is have God consciousness. And then he says, And let every person know what they have put forward for tomorrow. Meaning, what have we put to furnish our, our future home? Every single person, every single person who is alive today is moving to a future home. Y'all agree with me? We have, there is no doubt in that matter. We are all moving. Have you guys ever moved from one home to another before? It's intense, right? It requires a process of what? Packing, right? Not sure? Yes? Okay. Packing, right? And hiring movers or doing it yourself. But there's a, there's a process of taking your stuff and furnishing that home. Am I right? We are all moving to a future home. But some of us are furnishing it and some of us are burning it down. Do you understand? That home is saved for us. The question is, how is it going to look like when we get there? That's us. That's us. That's what we are doing now. Are we preparing that home or are we burning it down? And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, let everyone know what they have put forward for tomorrow. And then in the next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something very crucial. And this is what I want, inshallah, wrap up with. And do not be like those people who forgot about Allah, so he made them forget their own selves. That's very deep and very important. Why do we get lost? Why do we lose ourselves? Why do we have an identity crisis? It happens when we forget about Allah. And this is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we forget Allah, we forget our own selves. So my reminder to you and to myself is having that deep foundation in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That realizing that, for example, our salah is spiritual oxygen. If you give it up, you're giving up breathing. And that training is necessary for these workers because it's like telling someone okay i'm going to train you to run a marathon but they're not breathing i'm going to train you to be an olympic athlete but they don't breathe you understand that's impossible and so if we're talking about training workers and training leaders and training activists we have to make sure that they are spiritually sound that they're because this is oxygen the salah is our oxygen that the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is oxygen. Our scholars would say that a person who doesn't remember Allah, it's like taking out a fish out of water. The Prophet sallam, said the difference between the one who remembers Allah and the one who doesn't, is the difference between the living and the dead. And so this has to be part of that foundation and that training because there's no way that we're going to run this marathon 
And by the way, it is a marathon because we are dealing with a lot of challenges. And alhamdulillah, we had a lot of stats about the type of Islamophobia and the machine that we're dealing with. And so we are dealing with challenges and there is no way we're going to be able to handle that if we're not breathing. And so we have to create that healthy internal state so that we can handle these storms. Aqulin qawli hadha wa astaghfar Allah li wa lakum inna wa ghafurun rahim subhanakallahu bihamdak ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Jazakumullahu khairan for giving me your attention. I, I mean I know I was competing with like look at this dessert that just got put on the table. That's intense, right? Um, Jazakallah khair. I just, just quick announcement. I do have, uh, I, I am an author. I wrote a few books. I only have a few with me today. Inshallah, they'll be available in the back. I also wanted to offer this, this service for you. We are living right now in a time when there is a lot of stigma of reaching out and getting help. Um, that's why me and my husband, we both, we do, we try to do a lot of service, especially when it comes to, um, coaching and counseling and so my husband all specifically he does coaching for couples this is a big stigma and people asking for help and men men's issues we have an epidemic right now of a lot of um issues in our community uh including porn addiction and other types of addictions problem infidelity a lot of issues that we're dealing with and it's all hush hush if you are interested in getting that type of help or you know someone inshallah you can get information at the at the back jazakumullah khairan Uh, قولي قولي هذا واستغفر لي ولكم إنه غفور رحيم